Hello and welcome to another video with me, Christian Rauchenwald. Now today for a change, not from our studio, but from our office. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you everything you need to know in order to set up your Rock V2 hotspot from Cultchip yourself, so you're up and running. What to do if your hotspot is displayed as relayed, so not directly connected to the internet. How to back up your SD card and why you should do it. And last but not least, I'm also gonna share with you our Helium earnings for the first 24 hour period. Now I know that those earnings are not gonna be representative for how much we are going to earn long term, but I still want to give you an idea of how much you could potentially earn. And I promise I will follow up in the future, either after 14 days or after one month, to share with you how much we are actually earning with our hotspot in a one month period. Now to get started, our hotspot has been online now for slightly more than 24 hours. It's fully synced and it actually has more than 24 hours full of earnings already. And this is the time when you should do your SD card backup. So you should not backup your SD card before you set it up, but you should set up your hotspot, wait for it to be fully synced. Ideally even wait for it to have the first challenges and basically complete the seven step checklist that you can see within the Helium app when you check your hotspot and go to the progress section of the hotspot and then basically power off the hotspot and remove the SD card. And that's what we are going to do now. Now, in case you haven't noticed it, our hotspot is there behind me on our windowsill. And in order to do the SD card backup, I'm currently just gonna take it here and unplug it by unplugging or removing the power cord. And additionally, also I'm going to remove the network wire that's connected to it. And just in case you're wondering or you haven't watched our unboxing video, that's what the Cultchip Connect Rockery 2 looks like. So it's nothing fancy. It definitely doesn't look like something that you want to have too visible in your apartment. It also doesn't take up a lot of space and it only has basically three ports. So one for the antenna, one for your network wire and one for the power cord. The network wire is obviously optional because you could also connect the hotspot via Wi-Fi to your network. So therefore you wouldn't need the network wire in that case. However, for us here, it just makes more sense to do it with the network wire connected. Additionally, you might notice that there is a button here on the side above the power plug and that is actually to turn on the Bluetooth pairing. So that is what you will need during the setup. So for you, when you initially get your hotspot, the first thing you need to do is find the right location for your hotspot and then basically first screw in the antenna, never plug in the power when there is no antenna connected to avoid potential damage to your hotspot. And then optionally as said, plug in the network wire so your hotspot is connected via wire to your local network. And then once that's done, plug in the power cord and fire up the Helium app. Now I've already previously recorded the setup of the hotspot itself. So I'm gonna overlay my phone screen somewhere, I guess here and walk you through it. So once you start the Helium app, you can basically press the add hotspot button and that will open up a window that will ask you for what kind of hotspot you want to connect. Now there you can simply select the Cultchip Ruck V2 hotspot or basically Ruck hotspot and click continue. Swipe your way through the tutorial and tool tips which you should pay attention to because they explain to you how to best place your hotspot to maximize your earnings. Once that's done, you will see a scan button to start scanning for your hotspot. And that is the moment when you have to press that Bluetooth button here. Wait a few seconds, press the scan button within the app and it should find your Cultchip hotspot in the app. Then simply select your hotspot and follow the instructions on the screen, which will include, first of all, connecting your hotspot with your Wi-Fi network, entering the approximate height of your hotspot, so how high off the ground your hotspot is installed, and last but not least, confirming the location of your hotspot. And for that, the Helium app will ask you for access to the location data on your phone, so you can precisely point to the location where your hotspot is installed. And once you've completed those setup steps, you basically just have to wait because your hotspot will start to sync with the Helium blockchain, which in our case basically happened overnight and will go through the other seven progress or setup steps until it is eventually fully synced. And the first potential issue you might run into then is that your hotspot within the Helium app shows as online, but it also shows as relayed, in which case you will have to set up port forwarding within your router. Now, since there is like a literally endless possibilities of which kind of router you could have, the best thing I can do here is to point you to portforwarding.com, which I'm gonna quickly open up on my MacBook here, where you can basically look for router guides and based on the manufacturer, 
manufacturer of your router and let's pick here a link for example and then uh, close the ad and then pick the model of the router, you will be able to see a guide that explains exactly how to set up the port forwarding in that specific router. One thing worth mentioning here, however, is that portforward.com definitely doesn't have a complete list of every router on the planet. Therefore, if you cannot find the guide for your specific router model there, you might have to look on the manufacturer's website and look into the manual to learn how you can set up port forwarding. And once you've found the fitting tutorial that tells you how to set up the port forwarding, you just have to follow it to open the port 44158 using TCP to actually make sure that your hotspot is not relayed anymore. Now, if you're unable to do that and your hotspot still is relayed, it actually isn't too bad. It just means that your hotspot cannot directly communicate with the internet, which means it will try to relay the data through another hotspot. It means you will earn a little less in most cases, but if you simply cannot get it working, then it's still better than having your hotspot offline altogether. With all of that out of the way, your hotspot should be online and fully synced. Give it a couple of hours or maybe like we did, wait for a day to see how much you earn within a day and then get to the part of copying your SD card, which is a very important step and you might be wondering why. On that SD card is a key that enables the hotspot to earn helium in the first place. So if that SD card gets damaged or breaks, I don't know, over time, maybe after a year, maybe after five years, you would otherwise technically have either to pay a fee or buy a new hotspot. So backing up that SD card once your hotspot is on the Helium network and fully synced makes sure that if that SD card ever dies, you can just buy a cheap replacement SD card, flash that image on that new SD card, put it in and your hotspot is back working without you having to buy a new hotspot or pay for a new key if that ever will become an option. And that's what we're gonna do right now as mentioned. So we are going to basically back up the SD card. Which brings us to the first big question here, how do we actually get to the SD card because it's obviously inside the hotspot. Now if you're tempted to open the cover of the hotspot, there is actually no need to it. On the side of the antenna, so here you have this small cover that you have to pry open and there you will find the SD card. Now I haven't opened this one here yet, so I don't know how hard it will be, but that's what we're going to do now. And unfortunately trying to remove this just by using my nails seems to be next to impossible so I'm gonna have to use a small screwdriver here and although it might result in some scratches I hope that this will allow me to get open the cover here or sticker it looks to be not a solid cover now that I can press a little bit on it so let's try this from that side so you just have to get something sharp to get underneath it and basically remove that uh, it might be challenging to get that sticker back on then, so you might just get some tape or so to cover the hole that contains the SD card. Which brings us to the next issue. So I'm going to try, I'm not sure if the camera will focus, but you will see basically if we look like this, the SD card, I hope camera might focus, might not, is basically in there. And I don't think, like just with other Raspberry Pi, so I don't think that I can just press on it, which means I'll actually need some pliers and I'm going to quickly get them as well so that I can remove the SD card from here. So now with the pliers, it should be no problem to basically gently grab the SD card and pull it out. And there we go. So you see it's a micro SD card, which means the other thing that you might need other than obviously the SD card is an SD card reader, which I have here and probably additionally an adapter so that you can use the micro SD card in that bigger adapter and obviously some kind of computer, either Windows or Mac or Linux computer. And then depending on that, you'll have to look up a tutorial for how to copy your SD card. Now, fortunately enough, as we can see on my screen, the guide for the hotspot also comes with a section for the SD card backup, which I opened up here. And that actually recommends you to download SD clone for macOS. However, unfortunately that software is not available anymore and has been discontinued. Now if you're on Windows however you can scroll down further or select on the left the Win32 disk imager and that should work for you just fine. For macOS you will need another alternative. I found the guide that we're going to follow now real quick. I'm not going to explain every step of the way 
from this guide, but I'm going to leave a link to it in the description down below. And I'm going to fast forward through this part right now because it basically is just following a few comments and then basically waiting for the card to be copied to the hard drive. So with that, I'm going to plug in the SD card reader now and I'm going to fast forward and see you once the card has been backed up to my computer. Well, back again, it took exactly 1,268 seconds or 20 minutes to copy the roughly 32 gigabytes of data of the SD card. Now with that, the only thing left to do is basically to eject the SD card again. So I'm gonna do this here in disk utility. And with that, it's eject, remove it, plug in the power again to my MacBook so it doesn't die along the way and put back the SD card by removing it from the adapter and again taking the pliers to hold the SD card or micro SD card and putting it back into the hotspot. Now be careful because if you screw this up or you miss the SD card slot, it might fall into the hotspot and as a result, you actually might have to open up the case, which is not a problem, but I'm just saying or trying to warn you to do it right the first place, which I'm apparently struggling with right now. Okay, there it is, so it's in again and I'm gonna put the same sticker back over it and hope that that sticker still holds. It's not a huge issue because our miner is obviously indoors and therefore temperature and other things are not gonna be a big issue. So the hole is covered again. It doesn't look as nice as it did before. I'm not sure if the camera will focus on it, but you can see it here. And with that, it's back to just plugging it back in. Now, in order to do that, as mentioned earlier, Always, before you plug in the power, make sure that the antenna is connected. In my case, I also always plug in the network wire first and then the power to make sure that there is no kind of like a uh, shortcut or so caused by plugging something in or changing something. So I'm gonna plug this back in. And the red light is on, the green light is also blinking briefly and putting the hotspot back here where it belongs. And with that, the hotspot is basically now going to boot up and going to be back online again. I have the backup of the SD card, which I'm gonna show you guys. So I'm gonna switch to the screen again. Here it is like almost 32 gigabyte. And I'm actually going to rename the backup and uh, basically change the name to also contain the hotspot model and the serial number of the hotspot in case we decide to buy multiple hotspots so I don't get confused. And on top of that, I'm also gonna copy it onto Google Drive so that even if my MacBook dies for some reason, that I still have that copy available in the future and don't risk basically losing the hotspot because of some SD card failure. Now the last thing left is to make sure that our hotspot is actually online again. And for that, we're actually going to jump into the Helium app itself. I have it open on the phone. I'm gonna share it with you guys here. And there we are going to go to hotspots and you can see ours is called Stale Marigold Bull. You can also see that we earned 1.08 HNT in the last 24 hours. Currently, Helium has a value of $24.07. So those 1.07 Helium are actually worth $28.64 right now, which is amazing and considering that we paid $351.14 for the hotspot, including taxes and shipping, it actually should take, if the earnings stay like this, around 12 days to make our money back. And after that, we would potentially be looking at like $600 per month in additional income through Helium simply by running the hotspot here. And if you didn't watch my original Helium Network review, you might be wondering, well, but that thing likely is super power hungry. Well, it's not. It's basically a Raspberry Pi with a few modifications and a special chip. And overall, for us here, it will likely or roughly consume around $2.80 worth of electricity per year. So even if the price of Helium drops or if our earnings get lower, the chance of the hotspot not being profitable for us personally and for most people out there are next to zero. There is the chance, however, considering that it's like $350 to get the hotspot in the first place, unless you use a service like Emirate that in some countries allows you to get the hotspot for free, but keeps then 80% of your earnings, that it might take longer than 12 days for you to recoup your money, so to get your initial investment back. But considering the, in my opinion, huge potential and growth that Helium 
Ethereum network has. I think in any case, if you get a hotspot, no matter if it's the cult shape Rock V2 or another hotspot, once it's up and running and connected, it's literally, in my personal opinion, just a matter of time until you start making profit. Now, this is not financial advice. This is just my personal opinion. You obviously have to do your own research and decide for yourself if you want to get a hotspot and join the Helium network. Now, back to the app. As mentioned, to check if our hotspot is online, we can basically, after selecting our hotspot, press the cogwheel icon on the top right above the name of the hotspot which opens up this menu and we can just check if it's online by basically pairing it for which we again will have to press the bluetooth pairing button to get the hotspot to show up in that dialog in the first place. We can see it here. I can select the hotspot, it connects now. And basically in there we can quickly open the diagnostic to check if it's fully synced with the blockchain and also if it's connected. Now we can see it's connected and it's currently also fully synced. So even disconnecting it for 30 minutes to make the backup or 25 minutes to make the backup of the SD card didn't really lose anything in terms of blockchain synchronization and even if it had it would have simply catched up now. And with that that's pretty much it. Now the only thing left for you to do is once you're at this stage is basically to just keep watching your hotspot, check from time to time how much you earned and also if there is some manual action required which should actually never happen but it's theoretically possible. So just once per day or every couple of days open the Helium app. Now, if you are like us and you have multiple hotspots, then you would eventually see all of them in your Helium dashboard list. And you could basically check all of them separately. For us, we also still have two Nibra outdoor hotspots that we haven't set up yet. Obviously, you cannot install them in the same location. There should be at least 300 meters between each hotspot to maximize earnings. If we were to set up two or three hotspots here in the same location, we would basically just earn the same because the hotspot would start to compete with each other. Other. Does that mean that you shouldn't bother getting a hotspot because somebody else might get one before you? In my opinion, definitely not. Because even if one of your close neighbors or upstairs or downstairs neighbors gets a hotspot before you, well, then you would roughly just earn half the helium that you would usually earn, but you will still earn, so it's still a benefit. But obviously, preferably check the Helium Explorer map first before you go and order your hotspot to see how many hotspots are in your area. And while in some cities there's already better coverage in most cities, this on this planet there is still more than enough space for more people to get their helium hotspots and profit from the helium network and by getting your own helium hotspot you also help the helium network increase its chance of long-term success because the better the coverage all over the world of helium network the more iot device manufacturers might consider using helium network for their internet connectivity because it's cheaper for them than to find their own solutions. And that's pretty much it. Now, if you have any general questions about Helium Network, you can always leave them in the comments down below, or even better, use the link in the description of the first pinned comment down below to join our Discord community and discuss Helium with me and the community there. If you are, however, having technical questions, so like your hotspot is relayed and you cannot find the tutorial on portforward.com, well then I'm sorry, but I'm not running technical support for Helium Network. And I'm also not familiar with every router out there. So in that case, you probably are better off contacting the manufacturer of your device and or jumping on the official Helium Discord server and asking people there because maybe somebody else already has the same router that you do. That's it. Thanks for watching. See you in one of my other videos. Till then, bye-bye.